today. From Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte, North Carolina. This is the NFL on EA Sports. As we'll see P.J. Walker and the Carolina Panthers versus Russell Wilson and the Denver Broncos. The Carolina Reigns have arrived as we are inside a soggy Bank of America Stadium in Charlotte. Coming up, a rematch of Super Bowl 50 between the Denver Broncos and the Carolina Panthers. Welcome again, everybody, with Charles Davis. I'm Brandon Gunn, and yes, the rain is falling now, and it is supposed to continue to fall throughout this game. So how do you think that will impact this contest? Well, first and foremost, both quarterbacks are going to make sure the officials have those dry footballs coming in each and every play and standing over them sometimes with a towel before the center gets up there to snap it. Second thing is the focus of all the guys who handle the football. Do they wear gloves? Do they take them off? Will they carry the ball high and tight to make sure they have good ball security? That's paramount in a game like this. Eddie Pinheiro about set to get us going, and we are underway here in Charlotte from the 10. And a nice return sets him up pretty good here right at the 30-yard line. Here's Russell Wilson, 11th season in the league. First, of course, with Denver after a high-profile trade this offseason that saw him dealt from Seattle. And I think that even after a decade in the NFL, he doesn't get enough credit for not just his consistency, but his brilliant play and leadership as well. He's won a Super Bowl in Seattle. He's led his team to another Super Bowl opportunity also in Seattle. His numbers are always terrific, almost always in the Pro Bowl. And all his team does is win. This guy's a natural leader. So first and 10 now from the 30. Quickly to the air is Wilson. And his first look is incomplete. No sense risking anything there on first down, even though he's still in the pocket. He had a receiver out to his side, so just put that in a spot where the only people could make a play on it are the trainers and the coaches. Well done. So now second and ten after the incompletion on first down. Now a first carry for Melvin Gordon. And he's got a good gain of seven up to the 37. That's a really nice job by them picking up the run blitz and detecting it and blocking it and turning it into a nice run. And a lot of times you think if you blitz a running play, you're going to smother it. But a lot of the blitzers, they come in a little bit high. They don't have great leverage, and they're easily blocked and turned to the side. Now a first carry for Latavius Murray. And he's taken down at the 43, but not before picking up the first. Able to get what they need to keep the drive going with a six-yard pickup on third down. Faced with their first third down conversion opportunity and able to punch it through and pick it up on the ground. And to me, doing it on the ground sends a different type of a message than throwing the football. And, you know, let's face it, we've done a lot of games together. How often have we seen third down turn into an automatic passing down no matter what the yard is. Yeah, and last thing you want, that opening drive to go three and out. You got everything scripted, lined up. Let's get some points on the board, and they're able to avoid that three and out. On first down, Wilson. This one complete to Jerry Judy. He's got room at the 30, and he'll be forced out of bounds all the way down inside the 20. A huge play there for Denver, 41 yards. All right, Charles, let me put you in the head of one of those defenders out there. You have a big play like that go against you so early. What Does that shake your confidence? It shouldn't, but it often does because your thought process all during the week is how you're going to get after that offense and make your plays, and when they make one against you, Makes you a little bit hesitant. Time to regroup. 
So the big play means just like that, they'll operate from the red zone now on first down. Now Wilson. Open man Hamler, that's complete. And they've got this down to about the 12-yard line. And I think this is a route we'll see more of as this game goes on because with his speed, they want to get him the ball in space on drag routes just like this. They want him to get the ball and run after the catch. Good job there, though, holding him for a short game. Throwing again on second down. Wilson, pass incomplete. It's been a good opening drive offensively thus far, but you know they don't want to waste it and settle for a field goal attempt after that incompletion. So this is a big play coming up here on third down. Play number seven now coming up on the drive. Third and five. To throw again is Wilson. Got a man, it's Judy complete. And he'll be taken down, but he does have first down yardage. A nice pickup there of 11 yards, and it'll move the sticks. Uh, that's a big conversion there on third down, and this has been a great opening drive. You know, at this point, they'd hate to settle for three, but they created a fresh set of downs and a first and goal. First and goal, a chance for an early statement here on the road. Gordon will score. Touchdown, Broncos. That's just a solid, methodical drive to start this game. And how about how it culminated? Doing exactly what they wanted to do, getting the ball downfield, and then running it into the end zone. I'm just telling you, partner, when you run it in rather than throw it in, that hurts the defense psychologically a heck of a lot more. Brandon McManus for the point after. And we'll see if this rain affects the team's decisions going forward, but they kick it here, and it's good. So that drive takes him down the field in eight plays, and it's capped off by a touchdown run coming from Melvin Gordon. After the touchdown, here's McManus now to kick it away. Taken in at the three. And he won't quite make it to the 25. So here are the Panthers under head coach Matt Rule. And they'll be led by their 5'11 quarterback and a mobile one at that from Temple. It's P.J. Walker. This is a guy who truly believed in himself coming out of Temple. He bounced on and off practice squads for three years without an opportunity. And his big break, it came in another league. The unofficial MVP of the revived XFL led his team to an undefeated record with 15 touchdowns, only four interceptions in a shortened season before the league folded. A little bit on the small side, but he showed in his journey outside the NFL he has what it takes to lead a team. First down, Walker. He'll dump this one off to Hubbard. And the stiff arm made it a pretty little run, not a huge gain, but a nice chunk of yardage. Brandon, to me, what's important right here on this drive is for them to get at least two first downs. They've got to give their defense a chance to settle down, catch their breath a little bit after they give up a touchdown on the opening drive. To throw again on second down, Walker. 
And he will slide to a stop. He does have the first down. Give him seven on the tuck and run, and it'll get him a new set of downs. As he came to the line of scrimmage, he knew he didn't need much to reset the chain, so when he saw the space he needed, no hesitation. He went to the marker and got his guys a first down. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. They'll run out of the gun. It's Hubbard. And he is met quickly in the backfield. Down he goes, folded like a lawn chair. Officially, it's a one-yard loss. That's going to bring up second and 11. That was a terrific play, causing a loss. As a middle linebacker, simple. You can either fill holes or you can attack them, as he did there. Looking at a second and 11 now after the loss. To throw is Walker. His throw incomplete. He'll put a check mark in the box where the defense coordinator was saying, how well can we stay with these receivers if we're in man coverage? Because he just did it on that one, force the incompletion. That allowed him to get bolder with his pass rush, won't it? Absolutely. Frees up your guys elsewhere. An incomplete pass on that last play, and that means they'll need to come up with something here on third down. Here's Walker. That'll be caught right side. Chenault with it. And out of bounds on the other side of midfield at the 45. Give him 18. It's a Carolina first down plenty of things to talk about here, partner, but to me, their defense gave up a touchdown on the first drive. How about how they're responding, coming back? That's a big third down pickup to keep their drive alive. Show a first and ten now in Denver territory at the 45-yard line. Out of the gun, here's the give to Hubbard. And down inside the 40 to about the 38. A solid run on first down, gain of seven, leaves him with a second and three. The success there, Charles, coming on the outside of the field, the ground game. Curious to see if that continues as we progress. Yeah, we often talk about a variety in play calling and usually between run and pass. But in this case, with strictly the run game, you can be creative there as well. Run it inside, run it outside, keep the defense off balance. From the 38, Walker toward the center of the field, but it's incomplete. A lot of times it's that first read that you have. Maybe you get it in pre-snap, and he locked in on his target, but he was covered quite well, and that one's incomplete. The eighth play of the drive coming up. It's third and three. Now Walker. Throw left side complete. That's Thomas. And he'll cross over out of bounds right at the 25. A good looking drive so far for the Panthers and a first down here. Solid opening drive so far, Charles. They've moved this football into field goal range, but you know that they want to cap this off with six and not three. Absolutely, as one of the better coaches in the league always tells me. On offense, I want to throw body blows all game long and finish it with uppercuts. Well, here are the body blows right now. He's hoping in one uppercut will take care of the end of this drive. On first and ten, Walker. Oh, he rifles one, and that's going to be intercepted. Picked off by Justin Simmons. 30, 10, 5, and he takes this one back into the end zone. And the Bronco defense has a touchdown. Well, we went from scoreless to 13 0 in a hurry. First, their offense had the touchdown, and now the defense comes through with one. You can't get a better one two punch than that. Fall off a touchdown offense by getting one on defense. If they keep that effort up, you'll take the other sideline out of this one very quickly.
McManus now for the extra point. And it's good, and they have jumped out here to a quick 14-0 first quarter lead. So the defense creating some points, not only getting the interception, but then returning it to the end zone for the pick six. So they'll get another shot on offense following that pick six. And now the kick is away. Fielded just outside the goal line. And he brings us out past the 20 to the 24. The Panthers coming back out onto the field for their second drive. They find themselves in a good size hole here and a good size hole early on in this game as they come up on first down. Reception. Walker. He'll find his man, Terrace Marshall, complete. And they get him down, but not before he takes it across the 40-yard line. It's a Panthers first down, 17 yards on the play. Fourteen nothing to score. This is the NFL on EA Sports. First down with Hubbard. Gets past one man. And good vision there as he's across midfield and down to the 45-yard line. 15 more yards there and quickly another first down. I'm okay with the call there. In fact, I actually like it. I know they're down a couple of scores, but the running game worked in that situation. I would continue to go in that direction. To back good plays have them on the move on first down. And working out of the gun here, Walker. Thomas has got it, complete. And the tackle going to be made at the 38. Brandon, perfect defense in this situation would have meant that there was an incompletion that would have picked it off. Okay, so they gave up the completion. But I really enjoyed watching how the defense stayed in sync stayed in great communication and as he dragged across each zone you see him pointing communicating there he is and they passed him off to each defender ended up making a nice play and he can't find a receiver and he's brought down nick benito coming in there to record the sack well you're already up a couple of scores here in the first half defensively and charles they just seem to be playing really free on that side of the football i love the observation because with that type of a lead they feel like they can take a few more chances and be even more aggressive, and it's been paying off for them so far this game. And they'll need to get to the 35 if they want to keep this drive going on third down. To throw is Walker. And the pressure gets to him again. A loss of three on a sack made by multiple defenders. Already up two touchdowns. How about that drive killer of a sack there to add to their good play? This offense coming away with no points now when some kind of score was desperately needed. Johnny 
So on fourth down, here's Johnny Hecker to punt it away. And well done here. That one will kick out of bounds at about the eight-yard line. Let's go old school there. That's absolutely a great coffin corner punt. Someone's put some time in working on that, hasn't it? Seems they? like every year these guys get better and better. It's amazing how they can command that football through the air. Yeah, they used to actually practice with hula hoops where they place them and try and put them there. Now a lot of guys use barrels on the sidelines to try and put the football in one. They begin the drive with a run by Murray. And some room for him there as he'll take this up to about the 15. Quinn Miners, third round pick in 2021, called for the penalty. counter here's Gordon and he'll take this forward only up to about the seven it's a gain of three and it'll be second down vision is so important for the man in the middle because his ability to, to, to look through all the clutter that's happening in front of him diagnose a play and then go make it and finish it that's when the great ones know that they have the goods Second and 11 now. Wilson, that's complete to the tight end, Saubert. So the completion results there in nine yards. And that'll leave him with a third and two. Let's not quibble about the game there on second down. That was a positive play because that was a take-what-you-can-guess situation. Got out to the tight end. Now it gives him a much better opportunity to convert on third down. They'll try and run it. Here's Gordon. And he appears to be about two feet short on third and three. Leaves him with a fourth and one. I bet they thought they had picked that one up because it was a third and two call. And they got awfully close. Now we're at fourth and inches. I wonder if they think they're feeling lucky here <laughs> and maybe want to go pick it up. So on fourth down, the Broncos send Corliss Waitman out to punt. Oh, able to avoid him. And just a 30-yard punt that time. And the Panthers will take over in terrific field position. Carolina getting set to take the field. It hasn't gone particularly well for them, that's obvious. In these conditions, no points so far. They've got to get that offense on track. The question, how do they do it? It is the age-old question, isn't it? And to me, finding a way to make sure your playmakers touch the ball without it being too exotic, meaning you don't have to go deep down the field. Maybe you hit them on those short passes on the perimeter. Make sure you just turn around and hand it to your best runner and get out of the way. Don't cause any extra stress on your offense. And he'll wind up picking up about four as that is going to bring us to the two-minute warning. Call it a gain of four on first, and that'll make it second down. Walker. Connection made with Chenault. And he's going to be marked down just inside the 35. One thing you're hoping for when you run drag routes, you're able to hit a receiver in stride, and he can pick up a lot of yardage after the catch. 
But in this situation, the defense was effective, able to stop him before he could get a good head of steam going. A first down throw for Walker. He's got a man. That's Marshall. And they're going to get this down to about the 17-yard line here. This offense finding its legs now. Here's another first and ten. They'll run a draw now with Hubbard. Just a yard on the pickup there, and it'll bring up a second and nine. Now the Panthers going to use the first of their timeouts as they'll stop it with just over a minute to go before halftime. got a yard here second and nine now Walker got his man complete over the middle that's more now another timeout called for by the offense as the stoppage will come with a little under a minute to go in this first half the shotgun it's Walker buying time to his left and he'll be taken down but he does have first down yardage four yards there as they let him out of the pocket and he got enough for the first oh man just when the D thought they had the answer for him he went and changed the question surprises him by taking off himself he's able to set up his offense pretty with a first and goal First and goal, and a golden chance to get a score back here before halftime. Walker now. That one thrown away from the pocket. The officials kind of looking at each other, but they'll say there was a receiver in the area, so no penalty, just an incomplete pass. I'm really liking what I'm seeing from this defense because their coverage has been playing at a shutdown level so far, even backed up late. They're forcing incompletions and fighting to keep them out of the end zone as the first half winds down. Now a second down throw for the end zone, but it's incomplete. They're putting together a drive here in the final minutes of the half, but the coverage has been tight all game long, and they certainly want to keep them off the scoreboard here. Big play coming here. It's third and goal. Operating from the gun, Walker. And oh, it'll be intercepted. Picked off by Pat Sertan. And the Broncos are going to take possession here. It's a touchback, and they'll take over at the 20 yard line. And the defense, Charles, they bent a little bit, but they did not break. And then on third and goal, there, the huge interception. I think of the momentum they're carrying with them right now, Brandon, because in their mind, whether they want to admit it or not, they were conceding three points. Their goal was to keep them out of the end zone, not give up a touchdown. Instead, they give up nothing. What a big time play and a big time stop by them. The Broncos onto the field, ready to start their next drive. And with a 14-0 lead, they may just try to get this to the locker room. They'll indeed try to run it out as they start on the ground. And he'll just push his way forward for a few as the clock will run. Credit him with a one-yard gain there to make it second and nine. 
So we come upon halftime with the visiting Broncos taking the lead to the locker room. As we'll send you down the coast now to Orlando, that's where we find Jonathan Coachman ready with our EA Sports Halftime Report. Coach. Okay, Brandon, thanks very much. And welcome in everyone to our downtown Orlando studios in this EA Sports Halftime Report. This one has certainly been one-sided to this point. It's a two-touchdown difference as the teams have already come back out onto the field for the second half. So let's get you back out as well to Brandon Godden and Charles Davis. All right, Coach, thank you, and we welcome everyone back for quarter number three. calling for more of the same. The rain set to continue as we are underway in the second half. On the return, here comes Smith out of the end zone. And he's up past the 20 to the 22-yard line. But the Panthers ready to go back to work to start the third quarter. This offense, Charles, had a strong first half throwing the football, at least in terms of yardage, but that hasn't translated so far on the scoreboard as they begin the third quarter here trailing and looking for a little momentum. Yeah, you're right about that because, you know, let's face it, in the first half, most of their focus was in the passing game, and to their credit, resulted in a healthy amount of yardage. So I would think that at halftime, they're going to anticipate that defense loosening up a little bit to try and cover the passing lanes. They've got to get the running game going, and there should be some gaps to run through now. Third quarter starts with a run by Hubbard. And he takes us beyond the 35 before going out of bounds. 42 yards rushing for him now and just six carries to this point. Sometimes it's hard to believe, but there are times this game is about patience, isn't it? Has had the game he expected. But that run there, that may get him going. I was just going to say, maybe that gives him a little juice because you're right, he struggled, especially in that first half. Yeah, and I know the great ones always think to themselves, just hang in there. I'm just one big carry away from busting this open. That's a good start for him. And Walker now to throw on first down. And oh, he almost had his second pick of the game. Probably should have. Yeah, he's frustrated as it falls incomplete. I think he's got to be careful not to force anything into coverage right there. There weren't really any throwing lanes, but the best part for him, he's got second and third down to fall back on. They work again from the 38 on second and 10. Throwing again, Walker. And they're able to work this across midfield to the 48. He certainly isn't looking at the scoreboard out there because, to me, all he's concerned about is he analyzing the field and making most of the time left in this game. Deficit's still there, but he's starting to hit them with some big plays. Still in search of their first touchdown of the game, but they're on the move. First and 10. Looking to throw. Walker, that's to Marshall on the quick slant. And he's going to be taken down just shy of the 35. I don't know what they talked about at halftime. Whatever it was, it worked. They look like a different team here in the third quarter. Yeah, I doubt that there are very many trash cans that got kicked over that type of a speech. I think what they did was they analyzed what worked in the first half, what didn't, and figured out a better game plan. So from the 36 now, first and 10. Back to throw, Walker, and he'll have a gain of three to the 33. Simple drag route here, lined up out left and tried to work his way back across the field. You probably saw me twitch there, partner, because I think he wanted the ball a little bit sooner. By the time he looked it in, defender was right on him. Coming up on second and seven. Looking to throw, 
Walker throwing middle, but it's incomplete. Let's face it, if you want to get back into the game, these are the kind of throws you got to hit. He's wide open right there. Got to be able to get it to him, don't you think? And those are the throws that haven't been available to them every time he's dropped a pass. Yeah, that's a big miss. This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll look to throw again. And he'll be marked down at about the 26-yard line. No surprise to see his sideline fired up by that big play. Hey, we're fired up, and we're supposed to be neutral. That's a quarterback putting his body on the line to fight and just barely get the first down. When he does something like that, it gets everyone ready to lay it all out there and try and match his intensity. Walker throwing on first down. Looking left sideline, incomplete. Well, a momentary speed bump there with that throw, partner. The defense had other ideas, and they're trying to mount a small stand before this drive reaches the end zone. Second and 10 now, third quarter from Charlotte. To throw again, Walker. This is Chenault on the receiving end. And he'll go out of bounds in the red zone just inside the 20. That'll leave him with a third and two coming up. They got eight yards there. And they'll let their fullback try and push the pile. And he won't be close to a first down as he runs into a wall right around the line of scrimmage. No gain there on the play, and that's going to leave him with a fourth down. Try here's Eddie Pinheiro. This one from 35 yards away. And this is up and good from Pinheiro. And they will get themselves on the board here at 14 to 3. So a good drive there to begin quarter number three, but they're only able to shave three points off the lead. Well, something's better than nothing, all right? They didn't play particularly well in the first half, but they definitely need to step on the accelerator now and play a whole lot better. After the field goal, on to kick it away is Pinheiro. Fielded right around the eight. And it's a pretty good return here as he'll get this up to the 29. So now a look at the Broncos as they head back out there for their first possession of the second half. in 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos. Just shy of the 30. He'll hand this one off to Gordon. And he's going to take this ahead for right around three yards, but no more than that. Second down. Not a huge carry there on first down, but not all of them will be. But still, all in all, a positive play for the offense. It's all about picking up at least a few to set up what you're going to do here on second down. Three yards on that last carry. Here's second and seven. Wilson. 
toward the right sideline, but it's incomplete. Well, this at least is the right idea. I think they've got to get the tight end more involved. He had just one target in the first half, incomplete. Now incomplete here with the first target in the second half. Yeah, should not stop them at all from going back to him, though. Find him. Find him. facing a third and seven following the incompletion on second down to throw is Wilson this is Hamler on the receiving end and boy he had the marker square in his sights but a good tackle is going to leave him about a yard or so short so the completion good for six yards and it'll be fourth down I thought they might take a shot down the field but instead they ran a little drag route there I think they were hoping he could catch it and run away from the defender. But a really good job keeping the play in front of them, and they force a fourth down. The Broncos send out their punter now, as he'll punt it away for the second time. The call for a fair catch, and it's made at about the 23-yard line. Just 34 yards on the punt there, no return. And it will be the Panthers' ball, first and 10. Now this offense back out and set to go for their next drive. And Charles, they're certainly still right in this game, but they need that offense to wake up and in a hurry. Yeah, I like the way you put it. They certainly did seem to sleepwalk a bit in the first half. Now that their defense has done its job, it's their turn now to go out and try and get some points. Clock showing 90 seconds to go in the third. Walker now on first down to the right side and complete to Thomas. And this will go as a gain of seven as he gets it to the 30-yard line. Nice rhythm throw there on first down. He located his tight end, made a nice easy pitch and catch. Hoping he can break a tackle or two. Wasn't able to do that there, but still good yardage. Ready, get. Straight ahead with Hubbard. And this won't be enough to pick up the first. A gain of two, third and one. Typically, we think it's the strong safeties that are better tacklers, especially closer to the line of scrimmage amidst traffic. But in this case, how about the free safety coming up and making the big time play? This offense in desperate need of a conversion as they come up on third down. They'll try and run for this with Hubbard. And he's going to have the first down at about the 38. 50 yards rushing now on eight carries for him so far. On third down, that's a good job of situational football and understanding where the first down marker was and getting there. So here's a first and 10 at the 38. Right back to Hubbard. And he'll go down, and that will do it for the third quarter of action. Three quarters in the books. We'll return with more after this. You're watching the NFL on EA Sports. Second and nine, just a yard on that last run. Now they'll switch it up here and look to throw. They'll set up the screen here for Hubbard. Give him three on the screen. He couldn't break free, and it's third down. I thought that wasn't a bad time to call the screen. I thought late game, down on the scoreboard, had to figure they were expecting a pass downfield. Now, so the edge rushers, they're coming. That could have hit big. You're right. Good recognition defensively to snuff that one out. Here's Walker to throw on third down. And that's going to be incomplete. The coverage too good there. The contact popped the ball free, and it's fourth down. As his old brain remembers, when I see five wide receivers on the field as a defender, I know the ball's coming out hot. They expected it and got there and popped it free. Hey, 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 hey. 
Fourth down, Walker. And this is caught. He hits more. And he is going to have a Panthers first down as they find a way to convert on fourth and ten. The time to pull out the stops is now, and they convert there on fourth down. Fourth down trailing in the fourth quarter. They felt compelled to go for it, and they got it. Well, I'd look down at my play sheet, and what I would find, plays that have been successful throughout the game that have worked at the distance you need, and that's exactly what they got done. And this is going to be incomplete. Well, they've been back on their heels a little bit here on this drive, but a chance to exhale just a little bit there with incompletion on first down. Now they have to gear up, try and get two more stops, and escape this drive. So after the incompletion on first, now second and 10. Again, he'll drop to throw. Walker hitting the ball is out. And his guys are going to take over at the 34-yard line. Well, that's unfortunate because he had a nice run going. But give credit to the defense. They got a hand in the cookie jar there, CD. You have to think about vision. Finding a place to get down after you know you've gotten all you can out of a run. And obviously, ball security is paramount. In today's football, everyone's coming after the rock. You've got to make sure you protect it and protect the yardage you just gained. First and 10 here for Wilson and the Broncos at the 34. They'll start the drive with a run by Gordon. And he'll rumble for about five, up close to the 40. Got to figure now, after getting that turnover, they're just going to be happy to keep the ball on the ground, right? This is where covering the football, taking care of the ball, all the ball security terms that have ever been used, they come into play for the guys on offense right now. Just take care of it and they've got a good chance of ending up winning this game. The first down run got five. Here's second and five. This is Gordon as they go to him again. And he gets this one to midfield before he's brought down. That one going for a gain of 11 and a Bronco first down. Well, you know me, partner. I never tell them to back off of being aggressive, but sometimes you see the consequences when you're overly aggressive and you don't secure tackles. Guys break through. Trying to sell out to pry that football loose, and just as you said, cost some yardage. Yeah, you got to go get him. Stand him up first before you go for the ball. Don't just go for it initially. So following the run by Gordon, here's first and 10. From midfield now, here's Wilson. It's a short one here, complete to his tight end. And they're going to get this to about the 44-yard line. Let's just break this down and make it pretty simple. Key to the drag route, letting the play develop, finding the hole in the defense, and giving your athlete, yes, athlete, a chance to make something happen once he has the ball in his hands. Clock continuing to run. They'll probably wind this all the way before snapping it on second down. And, oh, he's unable to hold on to that defensively. A potential game changer, but it falls incomplete. I think he's taking an awful chance with the football right there. You've got to lead. You've got to protect it. And he's taking chances, putting it out there, and a little bit of jeopardy. Especially in a spot like this, fourth quarter, as you said, trying to cling to that advantage. Yeah, that one probably should have been picked, huh? It's a short one here, complete to the tight end. And they're going to have another first down as the tackle's made at the Panthers' 29-yard line. A third down conversion with a strong gain of 14. And looking to put this game on ice in the fourth quarter, but still not afraid to throw it as they show there. You want to play the game with confidence, and they have a guy who's in control right now. Their trigger guy throwing it, they feel just as confident with him doing that as they would if they tried to run the ball and run the clock out. On first down, Murray stopped at the 24-yard line after a gain of five. 
you can really tell right now both sides have amped up the aggressiveness that time the offense winning the aggression battle and the defense was obviously aiming for the football maybe a little bit more so than the runner himself and that's why he was able to break through and get the gain that he did two minutes left to play in this football game here on ea sports so it's bronco football as we get your reset here and the scoreboard on their side, they're just looking to melt away these final couple of minutes and put this one in the left-hand column. On second down, they'll run with Gordon. And he's going to have to protect the football and take his lumps here at this stage of the game as they stop him behind the line. This is a big third down, and you'd have to think we'd see a timeout right away if they can't stop him here. Now a 10th carry for Melvin Gordon. And they're going to stop him short of the first down as he's tackled at about the 21. And now with 1.52 to go, we get another pause in the action. A timeout here defensively. Needing the tough yards, they run it with their fullback. And he takes it down to the 13 and picks up the first. Now the Panthers going to signal for their third and final timeout. And they'll be disappointed to have to burn one there after giving up the first down. Game in hand, the offense takes the knee. They'll run it up the middle now, Gordon. And he goes backwards here, losing yardage back to the 16. That'll wind up as a loss on the play, so now they're staring at a third down and 12. The short field shrinks even more with the type of bodies they brought in on that play. Those extra tight ends, they weren't able to secure their blocks, and that one ended up going backwards. two plays each lose a yard they'll try to move forward here on third and 12. the win for the broncos seemingly assured they go down to a knee i don't know about you partner but watching them take the knee there and finish this one off i feel like i'm gonna be sore tomorrow this was one bruising affair low scoring but my kind of football not a work of art but maybe in your world, a little bit of a work of art. You I, like the defensive side. I thought it was pretty. I can't help myself. <laughs> I thought it was pretty. And it ends in a kneel down as the clock rolls down to zeros. Charles, in these lower scoring games, you know it better than anybody. Uh, points are at such a premium, but taking care of the football is king. They played turnover free from whistle to whistle, and they come through with a victory. Yeah, and that's what won them the game because even doing it that way, being that clean partner, they weren't able to really run away with this game. So that tells us just how important it was to make sure you played mistake-free football. That led to the victory. So that'll do it for us, for my partner, Charles Davis, and all the hardworking men and women on our crew. I'm Brandon Gaunt. You've been watching the NFL right here on EA Sports. Till next time, we say so long from Charlotte.